What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I just finished watching AEW All In. This is their second year being in Wembley uh, Stadium, and I enjoyed the show more than I expected to. Uh, I really only came in to watch the show for really two matches. The Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland for the AEW uh, World Heavyweight Championship. And if Danielson doesn't win, he must retire career versus title. And obviously, Will Ospreay versus MJF. Those were the matches I really came into looking forward to. But I actually ended up being surprised with a few other matches and things that happened in the show so i i will say that coming into it i wasn't really expecting much but overall the things that i was able to see i was enjoying um a lot now i will put this also out there i didn't catch the beginning of the show i think i was i caught it when the hook and uh <clears throat> chris jericho match was happening which I didn't really care about that, but I did like the ending about that on that match. We'll talk about it real quick. But uh, I was doing my uh, draft, uh, my fantasy football league draft, the ITC fantasy league draft. So shout out to everybody that's in there. Um, I was doing that. So I was kind of really focused in because, you know, I'm trying to win and, you know, pick the uh, right players and right pieces for my team. So I was kind of in and out, but I did catch like the end of that match. And, and we're going to start with that because I'm going to start with just really talking about the things that I did enjoy and surprisingly enjoyed about the show. And then we definitely got to talk about that main event because boy, oh boy, uh, the emotions. I'm on a high right now. So um, we can talk about the hook versus uh Jericho match. That's kind of where I started. I did see that uh mariah may defeating tony storm to become the new AEW's uh uh women's champion so uh, i caught a like the ending of that match and the crowd seemed you know pretty energetic for the most part the pieces that i did catch like the ending part of that match so i did catch that but let's get into the hook versus uh chris jericho situation i didn't give a damn about this match but what i will say the crowd was really into just giving big bill love even though he's part of the heel team he's working for jericho they were giving him love anything he was doing anytime he was a focal point in the match the crowd was really uh for him and uh shout out to this uh crowd out there they were very electric um the energy was on point on things that they cared about they let you know that they cared about it um but overall um it was a situation where cook was pretty much in a uh a 1v3 situation in this match it was ftw uh, rules or whatever and it was cool to see taz in a situation where he's like he got tired of doing the commentary watching his son get pretty much jumped on so he said screw it. if it's gonna be ft ftw rules fine i'll 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 join in on the chaos. So seeing Taz come off a of commentary and help his son out was a cool moment. And ultimately, Hook was able to capitalize on that. And he regains the FTW championship. So that was actually pretty dope just to see that. Um, seeing Taz out there help his son. He got a good pop, good reaction. So that was uh, pretty dope there. Um, the next match I want to talk about. And it, it it really did surprise me, and I'm not going to lie to you. The Battle Royal match. That match surprised me for the entrants that were in there because I was expecting this to be just kind of a filler match. If anything, I was expecting Adam Hangman Page to be the one to actually get the win here because the winner gets a opportunity at the uh, AEW World Championship anytime, any place. So I was thinking uh, Adam Page to be the winner here, but that didn't happen. But I will say uh, seeing Nigel McGinnis out there, and I've never got to see his ROH days, you know, but to see him out there and the the reception he got, you would have thought he was the he was the odds on favorite to win this match. That was cool. On him going against uh, Zack Saber uh, Jr., that was a cool moment. Crowd was really into it. And he looked good out there, bro. Like he looked, he looked like he he belonged out there. You know, it, ring rust is a real thing, but he looked in tip uh, tip top shape, and he was killing it. So that was my first time actually seeing him wrestle because I never really watched ROH. So seeing him wrestle was actually a, a pretty cool moment, and the crowd loved him. Then, of course, 
Ricochet coming out there, man. Ricochet coming out there was such a dope moment because he got a really great reaction. He got a really great reaction, came out there, crowd was electric, and he did what Ricochet always does. He's he's a, a super stellar athlete, and it was cool. It was cool to see that. My only concern, obviously, going forward is making sure that they keep the momentum going with him as long as possible because there are a lot of people in the company that can do some of the similar things he can do. But if they can put him in prominent feuds, I'm all for it. It was, it was really tough to see that for him to get that ovation and for him to get that love in front of that crowd. I think that was dope. And shout out to Ricochet doing his thing. I wish him nothing but the best. I'm not going to be one of those fucking idiots out here that, are, oh, you jump ship, so now I got to hate on you. No, I wish him nothing but the best. And hopefully <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, Tony Khan can book this guy in a way where, um, you know, it he keeps his momentum. That's the only thing I cared about. Um, I even saw Chris uh, Christian come out there. And I didn't get to see the finish because my stream ended up freezing the rest of the match. My stream froze, so I didn't get to see the finish. Uh, but uh, from what I heard, I didn't get to check it out. But from what I heard, Christian Cage ended up winning. And I seen a few people on social media upset about that. Like, oh, you got Ricochet there, but he doesn't win. I, I, I didn't think if Ricochet was to be in that match, or be at the show that he would be winning anything substantial. It would be more of like a, a moment to get people hyped about it. Um, but I didn't think he was going to win the match. So, um, but it was just cool to see him out there. But Christian Cage now has a number one title con uh, tensionship for the AEW uh, championship. So, I mean, shit, that may be a feud on its way. Um, with how things played out in the main event so but i enjoyed what i was able to see before my stream froze and the crowd was really into it so that was actually a pretty good battle royal in my opinion um next we gotta talk about mjs i said mjs mjf i don't know who mjs is versus uh will osprey will osprey came out there uh, with this Assassin's Creed type promo package or promo build video package. And obviously, uh, when they cut back to in the arena, they have the posters of Assassin's Creed, uh, I guess, dropping the new game in November. So it was like some cross promotion. It was cool, but at the same time, it was just one of those things where it was like, eh, I guess. You know what I'm saying? The video package was, you know, pretty cool. I get what they were trying to go with, but I don't know. It was just like, eh, I get it. Make your money. Who am I to tell you not to make your money? So do your thing. But obviously, he was going to be the overwhelming favorite in this match, and he was. And then, of course, MJF being the best heel in the company right now, and one of the best heels in wrestling, he comes out there with this all-American type drip and then he has the American flag drop down in the streamers at the beginning of the match, just everywhere. Just like, like he already won the match, such good heel heat. But when you really think about it, the streamers are everywhere. So they're going to be there for the rest of the show. But either way, it was still a, a good entrance, good heel. And they had a good match. I can't even really go into detail. I wasn't taking notes for this. I just wanted to watch it. You know what I'm saying? Um, this was a good match. This was a really good match. What I expected it to be. Some people say it wasn't as good as their 60 minute classic. And I can understand why people would say that. Cause it was like, you know, it was a, you know, a fresh matchup and you know, <laughs> a 60 minute banger, you know, when you're not really expecting it to be like that, you know, it can supersede expectations that you didn't expect. You knew they were going to have a good match when they finally, locked up but you didn't know it was going to be something like that and you didn't know the finish was going to be the way it was but i still think this match worked perfectly the atmosphere was there this was so good mjf doing what he does best being a piece of garbage heel but you love to see him get beat up um there there was a uh a spot where um will osprey was about to pretty much uh hit on uh, mjf uh, with his knee, but MJF ducked and then end up fucking blasting the cameraman. Cameraman just GG's. I've never seen a cameraman just get GG'd like that. Throw up the X for the cameraman. Got packed up. 
and that allowed MJF to try to do some sneaky tactics. And the overall theme of the match is will will uh, will will Osprey do the the Tiger Driver? That was the one thing they were setting up, even with the promo build. Like Will Osprey didn't want to do the Tiger Driver. He had a chance to put away MJF in their first outing, but he didn't do it. He hesitated, and this was the story going in. MJF saying, you don't have the balls to do it. You won't do it. Because Osprey said he doesn't want to do the Tiger Driver no more after the match he had with Danielson and how he injured him or whatnot. And even Danielson before the show, um, like not the actual show, but like during the week, he said, hey, just <clears throat> just do it. Like Nike, do the damn move. Put him out of his misery. misery. End him. Don't hold back. And that was what they were teasing. And I love that this move, because when you see it, it is a fucking brutal move. But this move is a move that once it's hit, is GG's. And I, I appreciate that because it looks brutal. And it, it and it, it should be something that they build up to, to have the baby face really be conflicted. Like, damn, I don't know if I should do this or whatnot. And they, obviously the referee ended up getting knocked out. And they were teasing that he was going to do it. The crowd's calling for it. He hits him with a low blow. And he ends up getting something else. It looked like brass. It wasn't brass, but it was some type of weapon he was going to use on, on uh, Will Ospreay. And all of a sudden, somebody in a hooded, uh, a black hoodie, hops on a ring apron and attacks MJF. Gets like the, the weapon from him or whatever the case was. He takes his hood off. And it's Daniel Garcia. And there was a lot of reports saying Daniel Garcia didn't re-sign with AEW. Well, apparently, they were wrong. Daniel Garcia was standing there. Crowd gave a pretty good pop for Daniel Garcia because he got written off of TV by MJF who attacked him and sent him to the gulags. Now he's returned, and he's looking for revenge. So he jumps off the apron. MJF's talking trash to him, but he's not paying attention Will Ospreay gets back up, and ultimately, he finally does it. The crowd was ready for it. He gets him in the Tiger Driver position, and boom, hits him with it. Ref comes back, too, for the one, the two, and the three, and you have your new, not United States champion, because he got rid of that championship belt. He said, no, 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 no. I want the, the international championship belt. Uh, so he ended up bringing that back, the belt that he uh, initially had, and um, it was it was such a it was it was a cool, good feel moment. The crowd went crazy for it. It was nice. All right, next we got to talk about uh, Mercedes Monet versus uh, Britt Baker. Um, that was the next match, and it was gonna be kind of hard to follow what they just had because the crowd was really high. I mean, really high for MJF and Will Ospreay, as I expected. And then that match happened. And I was watching it, but, you know, it was, like, kind of in the background because there was a few. It picked up towards the end, for sure. It definitely picked up towards the end, but the crowd wasn't as into it. They were into it here and there, but they weren't into it as much because they just literally watched them. You know, they, they just watched a really good match. So the energy kind of died down. I think the placing of this match heard it maybe they should have put it a little bit earlier in the card i think that probably would have been better um but the pacing of this match was definitely you know it wasn't bad it's just it was hard for them to follow what they did but ultimately which i expected um um uh, mercedes monet ended up retaining because i just didn't see her losing um, i mean they're building up that she hasn't lost um uh, maybe i I did see uh jamie hater return so maybe they'll build her up to maybe go for the title that could be a situation that they do uh down the future um but yeah nah uh for the tbs championship i, I kind of figured that uh mercedes wasn't gonna lose um and it, it was eh it was, like I said, I was watching it here and there. It was kind of in the background, caught the last few minutes of it. And I was like, oh, okay. It wasn't nothing to go home about, but it was it was okay, you know, for the most part. It'll be interesting to see if they do continue the feud. I don't know if it should be a one and done. Um, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. <clears throat> Next was the uh, Jack Perry versus 
Darby Allen uh, match for the TNT title uh, in a coffin match. And obviously going into this match, Darby Allen has never lost a coffin match or a casket match, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I kind of figured that Jack Perry was going to win here because they weren't going to have him lose. And to find out that Jack Perry actually built his custom TNT belt, oh, it was over. Once he dropped that video of him building it and melting down the, the silver and shit, which was actually pretty dope, if you want to be honest with you. I don't really still like the design of the belt, but the fact that he did it himself that just lets you know, yeah, he's not losing anytime soon. So Darby Allen not losing in this type of stipulation in a casket match or or a coffin match, whatever you want to call it. And then um, Jack Perry creating a whole new belt. Come on now. Now, one thing about Darby Allen, he's going to be all down for the car crashes. He came out there and he had thumbtacks like stuck to his face already. Like he he's just just doesn't give two f's about his body and it was a car wreck it was a car wreck at one point uh jack perry pulls out a bag full of broken glass but they're little small shards just pours it all over the ring and of course you hear fuck cm punk chants because they're wrestling in real glass like okay <laughs> we get it <laughs> we get it it's 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 a year a year ago where the whole situation, Crimea River, it's real glass, and now you get to wrestle in real glass. Okay, all right, we we get it. Cool. Anywho, that spot happens. He goes through the real grass, glass. He didn't cry a river. It was more power to him, man. I shit. I hope they paid him good money because there ain't no way. Ain't small glass, large pieces of glass, glass is glass. That didn't look fun. Didn't look fun at all. It was a car wreck of a match. What you expected? At one point, Darby Allen is bound by his wrist and his feet, gets thrown off the high uh, elevation of the rampway. Like at this point, it's like what the match is essentially over. Like Darby Allen can't do nothing. He dragged him, put him in like a body bag tarp, dragged him to the uh to the casket, opened it up, put him in there, and as Darby Allen rose up to try to get out, he fucking kneed him in the face. And then closed the cast again and the match was done. The match wasn't even that long. I seen a lot of people on Twitter like, damn, that match was really quick. They got through that. Hurry up. Get, get, get through this right now. They got through that match very quick. So after the match is over, that's when the Young Bucks come out there. They got some gasoline. They pour it, open the casket, pour it on him, pour it all over the casket. They about to kill this nigga on live television. I'm like, all right, we're about to witness a murder. And all of a sudden, Sting comes out there to help. It's always good to see Sting. Crowd pop huge because it's Sting. <laughs> Who's not going to pop for Sting? That was such a cool moment. Sting comes out there and dispatches uh, the Young Bucks and, uh, and Jack Perry as well. And he helps Darby Allen out of the, uh, the casket. So that was a cool moment just to see Sting to help him. He's like, hey, man, I ain't going to let my nigga get cooked. So that was a, a pretty tough moment. Don't know if the feud is over with Darby Allen and Jack Perry. We'll see. But uh, it was an okay match. It was just very, very quick. They they said, no, nah, we ain't going to waste no time because we got to get to the main event, the match that everybody wants to see. And, of course, we got to talk about the main event. Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland. This was fun. This was really, really, really fucking good. In my opinion, it's match of the night. I fucking love this match. And I haven't seen all the other matches, so you can say, I'll, I'm sorry. I, I don't need to see all the other matches. That That's match of the night. This was fucking great. The story they told. Daniel Bryan, or Brian Danielson, my bad is he's going to go down as one of the best underdogs ever. One of the best underdogs that's capable of folding you into a pretzel. He knows how to be an underdog, even though he's a, a wrestling savant. That He's so good at that. And I love what they did with Swerve here. Swerve has been a dominant champion. Um, 
obviously he has lost some of that that love and hype that he had initially before getting the championship but he's been a dominant champion he's been beating people in convincing fashions for the most part and it was interesting they went with turning him heel leading up to this match but it i get why because you needed to you needed to turn him heel you had to turn him heel only because of the stipulation of the match and the fact that he was going to Brian was going to be the overwhelming babyface because people want to see him as the guy again. And this is essentially what happened. Uh, Danielson's family, Bree was out there um, with his kids. They were ringside. So you already knew, oh, they're about to, they're about to pull out the works. And they did. Um, early in the match, Danielson was getting packed up. He wasn't really able to get much offense. They were selling the, the neck injury and stuff like that. And at one point, the referee got uh, distracted, and this was a pretty uh, brutal spot. Um, Danielson essentially ended up getting spiked on his head and neck area on the ring bell. The ref didn't see it, and we cut back to Danielson. He's busted open. So now Swerve is attacking like a shark. He's beating the crap out of him. He's doing the gritty on him after he's packing him up in the ring. Drags him to in front of his family, in front of his wife and kids, and starts stomping them out right in front of his wife and kids. Such a beautiful heel moment. He was getting some really good heel heat tonight, and it was really good to see that. And Danielson is just trying to fight, and he kicks out. He's kicking out, even though he, he doesn't have much left in the tank. And the way he's positioned, he's looking at his family. This was a, such a cool rise from underneath moment he's looking at his family and swerve is hitting the yes kicks on him kicking him over and over and over and every time he's getting up he's looking at him he's talking to his family he's like i'm not giving up i'm sorry baby but i'm about to do this like it was such a good moment crowd's getting amped and he fights back there was one spot where uh danielson hit the running knee on swerve and he no sold it i was like uh-oh I was like, oh, maybe he is about to lose. They really had, they the way they structured this match, it could have went either fucking way. This was, this was so good, man. This was so, it reminded me, and I said this on Twitter, it reminded me of Danielson uh, winning at WrestleMania 30, overcoming the odds and being able to go against everything that, you know what I'm saying, was thrown his way. So, at that point, it's looking like Danielson may lose because he, you know, he starts, he will gain a little bit of momentum and then uh, Swerve would strike him down. Then all of a sudden, you see uh, Adam uh, Adam Page out there trying to get in the ring to attack Swerve Strickland. Like, he's trying to uh, get him out of here. Like, he's, he's trying to attack him because he's still obsessed with Swerve being the champion. So they had to get security and official to get him from not getting in the ring. Swerve over there talking to him like, yo, get out of here, bro. And then he turns around and hits another knee. And then we go, he puts him in the lock. <clears throat> he puts him in the lock and he's trying to, you know, fight out of it. Swerve's trying to fight out of it. He, he's able to get his hands free, but Danielson's like, no, 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 no. Bends back his fingers. Puts him back in the lock again. Swerve has nowhere to go. The crowd's going crazy. And Swerve Strickland taps. And the announcement team said, that's the first time he's tapped in AEW. Swerved, tapped, bro. That was a crazy moment. Crowd went crazy. I had goosebumps. I was over here chanting, yes. It was so cool to see Danielson at the top of the mountain once again. Just think about that. He's at the top of the mountain once again. It is it's actually kind of poetic. If you want to be honest with you, it's, it's actually poetic. Because if the dates are right, hold on, I'm, I'm doing this live. If the dates are right, yep, WrestleMania 30 was 10 years ago. WrestleMania 30 was 10 years ago. 10 years later, in AEW, he is your world heavyweight champion, your top champion. 10 years ago, 
At WrestleMania 30, he became the top guy, the top champion. So it's so poetic that 10 years later, he reached the mountaintop, bro. That was, it was perfect. I know some people's like, ah, oh, Swerve should have won. And honestly, if you would have had Swerve win, I don't think people would have tripped too much because it would have been the perfect swan song or, you know, the perfect ending to Daniels in career. But this was great. This was fantastic. I got goosebumps. This is this will go down as one of AEW's best main events. And it's one of my favorites that I've seen. This was good. Really good. The emotion, the story was there. Danielson not giving up and fighting as hard as he can. Trying to overcome Swerve, this top champion. And he made him tap. Goosebumps. So, hey, comment down below. Let me know. Did you enjoy this show? What you give it? What rating would you give it on a scale of one to ten? What was your favorite part of the show? What was your least favorite part of the show? And are you guys excited to see what's gonna happen on this week's episode of Dynamite? I'm, I may actually check it out. Not gonna lie to you. Um, this was great. From what I did see, like I said, I can't really give it a score because i didn't watch all the matches all the way through because i was doing stuff and at the time i was drafting so but i will say this um from what i saw and how this show you know the matches that were you know towards the end of this show the the, the second half this was a really good show man this was fuck man this shit was really really good eight out of ten for the stuff that i did see now, I, I know it could be subjective because I didn't see everything else, but the stuff that I was able to watch, and I may go back and watch some of the other stuff um, that I miss, but stuff I was able to watch, I give this a solid 8 out of 10. That ending alone, that ending match alone is worth <laughs> so many points. So y'all let me know. But uh, hey, man, I appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel. And please, guys, don't be morons. If you don't care for AEW, there's no point in talking shit. <laughs> like please i know there's gonna be some of y'all want to talk y'all shit don't do that don't do that just let if you didn't care for the show don't don't comment on it all right just let it go but for those who do care or did watch it y'all let me know how y'all felt about it but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace